Welcome to the Otaku Podcast, everybody. My name is Braxton. And I'm Taylor Fry. This podcast is for Otakus by Otakus. All right. So, the Otaku, before we do, like, what we actually, like, spent, like, five days doing, yes. we're actually going to, like, introduce this podcast a little bit. So, this podcast here, we are going to talk about, mainly we're going to talk about, like, anime, manga, that sort of stuff. But we're also, like, on occasions, we'll go off topic. We'll do, like, topics... We can and, go all the way to games, talk about Japan itself. And, hey, yeah, exactly. Honestly. Um, so today, uh, based on what the title is for the video and the, the, uh, the audio, uh, we are going to start us off by at least introducing ourselves to uh, everybody as to what anime, what mangas we mm -hmm. like to watch, enjoy, that sort of stuff. So we've... Compiled a list. Uh, I mean, pretty long list actually. Uh, yeah, there's pretty long. There's this page, there's this page, and then there's one on this last page. Actually, two on the, yeah. on the last page. Our front, our back, and then <laughs> and then one yeah. on the last. Page. And then we also have notes and stuff of the said series. Just basic brief. Notes. I have seven pages of notes so <laughs> prepared. <laughs> Um, we also have three of the <clears throat> worst animes I've seen. I've got worst. two. I've got two. Braxton only has yes. one. Because Braxton doesn't watch a lot of the bad ones. I do, yeah. unfortunately, because I'm a slice of I mean, of life if guy. I think they're going to be bad, I just don't watch it. I don't exactly. want to experience it. The thing about like <laughs> what like the, the worst animes is I've I've seen four episodes of the first one, the entire season, the entire series of the second one, and I've not seen a single one of the third one. We'll get to those in a moment. And um, most of this stuff that we talk about is going to like just be like us throwing it out there. Like we pop we. Probably haven't seen, like, the... I mean, a lot of them we've at least seen, like, at least, like, five or six episodes, I want to say. Yes. At least, to get a good basis of it. Or have seen the whole um, series. I think... We have a big section about uh, isekais. Yes, the, uh, like, 12 uh, animes are just, like, random, out of the blue, like, different animes. And then we have, like, six, seven in a row of isekais that we're all going to be talking about. Everybody likes those. I mean, everybody loves the isekais, am I right? It's now? a little bit of an overused genre, but it, it's it always is. entertaining. That, that's, the thing, that's the thing about anime and, all, and manga and all that. There's just way too many, like, isekai. It, it's only isekai, so, like, fantasies. Isekai I think, and ecchi. There's a lot of yeah, that. Yeah, unfortunately. But the thing is, is I've actually studied Japanese. Uh, I've been studying for about, like, six months, and my Japanese is absolutely terrible, but that doesn't mean I'm going to try and attempt to pronounce the Japanese names. Braxton here hasn't even done a, a, a lick of Japanese, so he's not going to attempt any Japanese. I mean, I know a phrase, but I can't say it. That's why I'm not allowed in Japan. <laughs> uh, keep, I have a restraining order for that. Exactly. So, I right. need it. So we're going to start off with three of the worst animes that we have worst. seen, or at least heard. And the first one was actually like the first anime series that I was ever introduced to. Uh, I genres. Make sure this. Uh, make sure to say the genres for everyone. Exactly. Uh, I'm a little colorblind, so it takes me a little. It would take me about a minute to get it right. But okay. So. Do you want me to say the genres then? Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And do it. Uh, this. Since uh, the three genres are usually together, we have action, adventure, fantasy. Just because we have that doesn't mean it has all three of those. We just lump them together because usually they are. Mm -hmm. So Attack on Titan, we have action, adventure, fantasy with a subgenre of drama. Yes, Attack on Titan, uh, we pu I put at the very top <laughs> of the worst anime list because uh, when I first, I I've seen a couple like anime movies back uh, back then. I watched The Silent Voice and I've watched a few other uh, movies, mostly by Koito Animations, but. Um, when wanting to actually like get into the anime series and stuff like that, my friend Brody, actually no, yeah, my friend Brody's ex-girlfriend, well, girlfriend at the time, Annalise, was all like, hey, you should check out Attack on Titan, it's like a good series, so I was just like... That's what I was told. Hey, so it's, Exactly, so I was just like, alright, I'm gonna go ahead and watch it, and I dropped it after like the fifth, it took, it took me, because usually whenever I do like anime bitches... It's always like I watch either half the season in one night or all of the season in one night. Same Never. here. I always stop at 6 or 12 exactly. or multiple of 6 usually. Uh-huh. But for me, it took me, like, 
when I watched Attack on Titan the first episode, I stopped, waited a few days to watch the second, stopped, waited a few days to watch the third. I think I dropped it after like the fourth or fifth episode just because I, I just simply didn't like the, the, the whole premise behind Attack on Titan. I only Titan. made it to six episodes in. I did that all in one night, so it was just back to back. Uh-huh. What really got me was how predictable it is. Oh, it's incredibly that predictable. It's just, well, it is a very good, sorry. No. Well, it is a very good concept. They could have done a lot better with the plot. Exactly. I think the the whole issue with the Attack on Titan to me was just I I didn't even like the characters. I <clears throat> I hated basically all the characters. I can't even name the characters because I'd spent so long since I'd seen it. Aaron Yeager is uh, the main character. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I remember it. There's uh, what's uh, I can't uh, remember Levi. 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 He's like the only one that I really liked. And oh yeah, that's because his attitude's hilarious. Exactly. But the only the only thing that I've seen from Attack on Titan was Gigook's video on uh, Attack on Titan in like nine minutes. Everybody knows uh, that. Video. Oh yeah, that that one's very entertaining. They, like you don't have to like Attack on Titan to enjoy the heck out of that video. And it's or absolutely... videos like that. Honestly. Exactly. They're a lot of fun. Exactly. Um. So for Attack on Titan, I just didn't like it. I, I hated basically. I basically, I basically hated everything, but not as much as I hated the second anime on this list. Oh, you you don't know it. I know nothing about this one. But so, it's, but it's all Taylor here. But it's Citrus. Oh my God. Okay, so for a little bit of a background story for me when it comes to anime, um, the first two anime that I've actually like watched series wise from. For, uh, first episode all the way to the end was Domestic Nakanajo, which is Domestic Girlfriend, and Citrus, the first two. Not very... The first one was good because I'm actually like really interested in that story. And we'll talk about Domestic Nakanajo later. Oh Cit yeah, but quite a lot about that, I'm betting. <laughs> Citrus, ugh, God, hated it. So basically... <laughs> Too fruity? No, no. <laughs> the whole premise of Citrus, it, it's... Citrus is like Domestic Girlfriend, but Yuri. So Okay. So Lesbo. Lesbo, yes. <laughs> so it's this girl okay, the thing that I hate, I can pull it up real quick and show you how much I hate it. Like the character designs, absolutely like I hated them. So was it the art style that really threw you off? It it's not so much the art style, it's it's just everything about Citrus, just like ugh. Like, um just Hopefully this shows. Okay, that shows the. It kind of shows the the manga pictures, but like you can you can like see it right there. I'll pull it up on the screen as well. But like if you get a um, like it, the art style is not terrible. The art style looks pretty good. It, but. It, yeah, but like you have to like watch like the first episode to like really understand why I hate hate the art style because mm. like the because I hated the main character. Um. Uh, so it's Yuzu Arihana. It uh, ends up. Um. She's like a normal uh, high school girl. Who's, Most main characters are. Yeah. yeah. And they mix... She's in a mixed gender high school. But she has to transfer over to an all-girls high school. Which has extremely strict rules. Spicy. So, uh, the first day, every... Like, she fail, like she fails everything on the dress code. Like, hair, uh, ponytail, legs, the skirt, everything. She fails everything. Ponytail length? Yes. They're really? That, they were that strict. Good God. Hair length, everything. They were super strict. Okay? So, because everybody in that school was wearing either brown hair, brownish, blackish hair. But for Yuzu, she was wearing blonde hair. So, she was... Every main character has, has to have an odd hair color yeah. um, uh, with, compared to the setting. Exactly. Um, That's just how it works. And then um, May, who is the, like, the president of the school, comes in, tells her that, you know, it's not allowed and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And... It, and I, it would, like, at first, it's not so bad. You think, okay, you can get used to this until, like, like five minutes in. Or, like, when she's, like, actually trying to confiscate everything. Probably should have muted your phone, phone, buddy. Shut up, phone. <laughs> I don't care about Facebook. Um, but, like, as soon as she's getting, like, confiscated, like, and all this sort of stuff, mm -hmm. May, like, goes and grabs her, like, behind. Ooh! Sneaks up, grab up the phone. It's... Absolutely, like mm. it caught me way off guard because I was just like, "What is oh, happening?" You know, a handful, and it doesn't, and it doesn't take long until like it takes like maybe 10, 12 minutes into the episode, the first episode, where we're introduced to the fact that May and Yuzu <clears throat> are now stepsisters, and as most Japanese things go, yeah, honestly, it's and, like, "Hey, you like her? By the way, she's your sister." But you know, it's okay. It's step, you know. 
That's yeah. how you make it legal. Step. It's not blood related. Yeah. It, it, we all know it's not incest if you shot with chromo. Um, <laughs> not incest if you just mute the video. <laughs> um, but the thing that I just hate about it is just how rapey it is. Ah. Because she, because Yuzu forces herself onto Mei several times and vice versa. But Yuzu doesn't know how to react to Mei's, like, like, whatever the Advances? Heck. I guess so. It's just, I, uh, I don't like it. So it does very bad at creating, like, a friendly atmosphere. It feels, like, yeah. extremely forced, yes. I take it? Yes. Unlike Domestic Girlfriend, everything in here is very rape-like. You're gonna see him uh, referencing Domestic Girlfriend quite a lot. Well, yeah, well, especially, well, only for Citrus, because Citrus is, like... Citrus is basically domestic girlfriend, but for Yuri's, but more rape, basically. And I probably should stop saying that word. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> PG-13, it's fine. No, 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 no. At the end of it, it's probably going to be at least mature. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All I right. I mean, the intro was opai. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you don't know Japanese, good. Don't learn that word. All right. So SAO. Bit of a controversy oh, behind God. that. Either you love it or you hate it. Oh, God. That's kind of just how the community is with it. <laughs> so, as you can see, Taylor already, over here is already, oh, God. There, there, so, there's a reason why it's number, it's number three on their top three yes. worst animes. So. You hate it. I have a summary right here. 10,000 players are trapped in a VR, VR MMORPG virtual reality. Mm -hmm. uh, with no way to log out. Yep. If you die in the game, you die in real life, just like the Matrix. If somebody tries to take the VR stuff off of you, dead. It kind of reminds me of Ready Player One to some extent, except the, the players in Ready Player One can take their headsets off. If anybody has seen that movie, you get what I'm saying. I want to see it, but I It's really good. There's a lot of I've been, good references. I've been seeing a lot of negative reviews for it, though. No. The thing Unless is, they're just not real uh, weebs, you know? Exactly, because there's a <laughs> lot of references to, like, Japanese stuff in there, so that's probably why I loved it more. But it's also, like, for, like, gamers, so... SAO is basically like... Totes gamer, bro. It's pretty much... Uh, SAO is just basically Ready Player One, but on steroids and anime. The only way to get out of the game that they're trapped in is to be 100 floors of Aincrad, which is the name of the tower. Um, it's basically this huge tower, and that's what the whole game is. Each floor ha has like its own city and whatnot, different yep. monsters, gets stronger as it goes up. So the main character, Kirito, he is trapped in... Uh-huh. And he, he's more of a loner. He was a beta player, so he knows a lot how the game works. Uh, he meets his love interest, mm. Asuna, which is also kind of a loner, but they ended up banding together to defeat one of the floor bosses. There's a boss on each floor. Yeah. Well, what really bothers me about SAO is uh, the they did not spend enough time on the first arc. In 12 episodes... They got out of the game and then did a whole nother arc in a different one, which really bothered me. And in that 12 episode, which is already fairly short, c considering that's like the main point of it, mm -hmm. there was like two filler episodes about fishing and getting a cabin. All of it seems incredibly rushed. It does. I can see why a lot of people don't like okay. it. it. That's why I understand. That's why I always... Like, what you say, you either you love it so much that you can't get enough of it, or you hate it so much, you want to, like, stay away from it with a 10-foot That was my first anime. And you know what? I liked it at first, until I started watching others, and I'm like, wow, the plot is so much better. They spend more time on the important things. They don't add that, that many fillers. The thing, the thing about anime is, the first few animes that you've seen, I've always, it's... I've always been told this. The very few animes that you've seen, like, the very first, like, three, four, maybe five, you will always think they're either really good or really bad, depending on what your stances are. Attack on Titan was my second. Attack on Titan was technically my first, but it wasn't my first that I actually completed. I'll talk about my first that I actually completed later. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, so you're done with SAO, right? Yes. Okay, so now we've gone from the bad and finally the gotten bad, the... the, 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 the Stay away from exactly. those. Exactly. Stay away from those and into the come to me animes, I guess. Yes, the good ones. The ones that are fairly good for beginners to anime or, you know, veterans, honestly. Okay. If um, you're a veteran, veteran, you probably know most of these. Exactly. Um, as well as just, it, this is like another way of saying, like, how, what we usually watch as, um, as a anime we lose ourselves or otakus. Ones that stuck out amongst the norms. Yes. 
There's a few in here that we obviously left out because there's no way we could... Because it's probably going to take about like two, maybe three episodes probably. Oh, quite a bit. So, I mean, it, I don't think we want to go longer than like... I mean, we... I mean, you could probably cut the isekais in their whole episode. Pretty so much. This recording is probably going to be broke up into three. Pretty much. Um, and any in any case, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Um, All right. Let's continue on. Yeah, then. I was going to say I. Oh. Right. Um. Usually for these anime or for these <laughs> sorry for these <laughs> podcast episodes, I would like to only do it like at most, like the very most, fifty minutes. If, 50? If it gets to that point, or at Let, least 40. Let's start off with shorter ones until we're more comfortable being in front of a camera and we know better how to continue on a conversation and never let it get dull. That's true. Because this is our first time ever trying to record a podcast. That's, that's true. So, I, I don't know. It just depends It'll on... It'll start shorter and then get longer as we're more comfortable exactly. and better at it. It just depends on what we do. We'll probably do, like, the our first page, and then we'll do, like, the isekais in another episode. Yes. And then we'll do, like, the rest of them in the other episodes. The ESA code. The EC code. EC code. <laughs> All right. So, so let's get. So Branson's going to start us off with one of his favorites. Well, I don't know if it's well, one of my like top favorites, but I really enjoyed it. This was probably the third or fourth I ever watched. Uh, it was on Netflix, and you know Netflix, uh, you know cheap, easy. And there's a bunch of different ones on there. They're not necessarily the most well, you, you say thrilling. Netflix, you, you say Netflix. There's nothing wrong with Netflix. You say Netflix is like cheap and easy. It costs the same to get a Crunchyroll or a Funimation Premium ship or whatever than it does with the Netflix. But you see, my mom's not too supportive of the whole anime. Uh, uh, she just thinks it's all tits and a Was I not supposed well, to say that? You well, can, we can I'll, blur probably, that out. I'll probably bleep that out. And plus, you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Well, I mean, honestly, you know, when you're watching it by yourself, you know, cool action fighting scenes, but the second a parent walks in, instant money shot. Yes. And then it's just embarrassing. It's like, ah, oh, no, I, I promise I wasn't watching anything like that. I, I promise, but <laughs> it's not what it looks like. Exactly. So, Adventures of Sinbad. Uh, so, the whole Magi series, or Magi, I'm not entirely sure how to say it, follows a, uh, basically a genie, mm -hmm. per se, that helps guide warriors that are chosen to become the next king. While that one is fairly good, I don't find it as interesting or as like captivating as Adventures of Sinbad. This takes place before that series. It's like a prerequisite. Uh-huh. So in Sinbad, it's a whole lot uh, the classic, you know, uh, fantasy world with dragons, all that. Dragons. Yeah, exactly. And we'll talk about more about dragons later. So, the series tells the adventures of Sinbad and his brother as they gather a crew. Set sail on the ship Nomad in search of wealth and adventure. Mm. Along the way, they face witches, wizards, strange tribes, and, a, and fantastic creatures. Mm. And so towers keep appearing, or dungeons. Once you clear them, you basically earn the favor or soul of a god. Mm. So what Sinbad, Sinbad's goal is to collect as many as possible to create his own nation where everybody's equal and free. Classic. See, the Classic thing is, uh, ideals of a hero. Yeah, the thing is, is like, I've never actually seen this series. I've heard of this series. I've heard about, I've heard of basically all these series that we've listed. It's just I've never seen any of the anime episodes or read any of the, like, light novels or manga. Just We're going to have to do that. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's just we're, we're going to have to, like, like... I've only been watching anime at least, like, almost a year now. Uh, I've been watching for a few years, but it's kind of an off-and-on thing, because yeah. before I was very embarrassed to watch it because of the whole stereotype around it. Yeah. I, now I just own up to it. It's like, yeah, I watch anime. So, eh, so what if there's it's a revealing scenes? It's part of the culture I, at this I point. Want, I, I didn't really care for anime at the time. I didn't, like, say... I wouldn't say I disliked it. It's just I didn't care for it just because of the fact that I, it just wasn't my thing. And then I was introduced to... Um, then I was introduced to A Silent Voice, and then I watched that and kind of opened it up a little bit, but just not enough that I would, like, wanted to, like, go crazy like I am right now. And I think part of that is a negative stereotype behind is. it. Because yeah. if you say you watch anime, people judge you. It's like, oh, I, I see. You know, weeaboo, get on my exactly. life. Stuff, that sort of stuff. That, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, there is like some like creepy things about anime. It's, but you don't have to watch it. I'm always forcing you. There's so many others that are good. Exactly. Where the plot isn't just this. Exactly. So, you know, there's lots of good mangas and good animes to see that aren't all about like 
the like etchy the etchy you know the the chest and the legs and the thighs and all that sort of stuff it's not that mu there's there's a lot yes there's that basket but there's also a basket full of like good ones that aren't too you know like bad which reminds me I think my fourth or fifth anime was High School DxD. Oh, God. <laughs> now, if you want to talk about fan service, whoo! But no, I actually no, no. really like the plot behind it. No, but if, I don't want to go want, too in-depth because... If, if you want real good fan service, you're still going to sort of... Or domestic girlfriend well, that too. as you're in. You're still, you're still, I, can, I want to go on and on about Yosugano Soda because that not only broke me once when I first watched it, but watching it again with Brody, oh, that bro that even broke me twice. I've already seen it. Now I'm playing the visual. All right, let's try to get back on track exactly. a little bit here. All right, Goblin Slayer. Gob I, anybody in anime has heard of this already, at least. Everybody's known about the controversy about Goblin Slayer and it, its first episode. Mm -hmm. Now, Goblin Slayer was... I mean, Goblin Slayer is super popular. It's in its top 100 on my anime list in terms of popularity. Um, it was made by White Fox, which White Fox is known for creating some amazing good like animes. And there, no surprise there, Goblin Slayer. There was no letdown of Goblin Slayer, exactly. that's for sure. Now, I, I, okay, when watching Goblin Slayer, and I, ex I, didn't ex I expected it, but also didn't expect the first episode, that whole moment with the, uh, the, the goblin the and the, the, uh, the, that woman. Yeah, the whole uh, novice adventurer crew. Yes. Um, the goblin's taking advantage of them. Exactly. Like, and, I, and I do have a good little story about Goblin Slayer as well, uh, because um, I forgot who makes it exactly, but on YouTube there's three episodes of a Goblin Slayer abridged oh. series, which the second episode actually has an intro from Rhapsody of Fire, which uh, that his favorite man. That that's what got me into Rhapsody of Fire was a Goblin Slayer <laughs> abridged. Wow, got it from an abridged, huh? Exactly. That, that's what got. That's what's like really cool is that my favorite metal band, which is Rhapsody of Fire. I first started listening to them because of the Goblin Slayer abridged. Hmm. Um, so Goblin Slayer, uh, it's basically just this like guy in all metal. Is it metal? Yeah, it's yeah. all metal armor. It's uh, fairly light. Yes. It's more of a novice adventure armor, which he is not. But he uses that because it's light, it's durable, and, he, and it's cheap to repair. Exactly. And this guy just goes on and on about goblins and killing them and all that sort of stuff. Because his family was slaughtered by exactly. goblins and he had to watch his uh, older sister get defiled and killed in front yes. of him. So he's taking it to the goblins as a way of revenge and stuff like that. So that's and, all he'll ever hunt. Exactly. And um, I think there's... I th yeah, there's a movie coming out with uh, Goblin Slayer as well. I, th I can't remember. I hope it's good. I, I really hope so. I hope I it's not a live really. action. I'm not a huge no, fan. No, no, it's not a live action. It's like, I think it's being animated by uh, White Fox. So, I think. Right. Uh, I can't remember exactly when it releases. I'll probably pop <clears> it up on the screen, of course, if you're watching this on the video. If not, I'll. <laughs> you can probably look it up on my anime list because it's one of the more, like, um, the more popular, like, movies that are coming out because it's Goblin Slayer. But. Goblin Slayer is just that fantasy, uh, that fantasy that, did we put psychological, no, did we put psych, I can't tell. Uh, psychological for the subgenre. Okay, because I couldn't tell if that was pink or not. Oh, now I see pink, okay, for down there. <laughs> um, so, we did put psychological for, uh, Goblin Slayer because it, it's really. It really messes with it, your mind. It does, and, you know, the whole thing about, like, a lot of people will say, like, Goblin Slayer was, like, after the first episode, it was, like, first episode, then the second, third, fourth. It was just, like, it wasn't that, like, good afterwards. I stayed interested the whole time. Exactly. Because I read the manga first, and the manga is exactly. so good. I, I remember the first time that I went to buy a manga was we, we were down in Fort... Me and my buddy, uh, Connor, were down in Fort Wayne, and we decided to go to a Barnes & Noble. Well, we decided to go to the Glenbrook Mall, which was in Fort Wayne at the time, which had Barnes & Nobles, which also sells <clears throat> manga. So when we walked into Barnes & Nobles, I looked over to the manga section, and there was Goblin Slayer. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get arrested in Goblin Slayer, so I'm going to take... Mm -hmm. I took, like, the first three volumes of Goblin Slayer at the time and bought them. That cost me about, like, 40 bucks. So it, it was a little <laughs> expensive, but then... But, you know, Goblet Slayer manga is definitely something to read and watch at this at the same time. Now, it is, it does have, it is mature. Though, it is. So. It's very, there's a it, lot of love. It's a, that and there's some very, very inappropriate, 
Etchy, but in a very dark yeah, way. Yeah, dark etchy, we'll call it. There, yeah. There's two kinds of etchy. It's a very grim fantasy there's one. Two it's kind like of, not all rainbows and yeah, sunshine. Yeah. There's two kinds of etchy. There's the dark etchy, which Goblet Slayer has, where it's like, it's there, but it's not for fan service reasons, which is yes. number two, which is fan service etchy. If fan service etchy animates it's, what you like. It's different from like dark etchy. Yeah, we'll coin that as dark etchy. Yeah, Dark Etchy is what Goblin Slayer is all about, and, you know, it's... Uh, not all about it. It's not well, all not about all. Dark Etchy. Oh, not all. Just Etchy, there's, yeah. like, it's sprinkled there, in there. Yeah, but just enough that's like, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's how bad it is. Uh -huh. Like, not, not like how bad the show is, like how bad what's happening in the show, like, like how awful, like, mm -hmm. like emotionally. All right, so done with Goblin Slayer, let's go to Braxton. Kame ga kill. Kame ga kill. I haven't actually seen a Kamen Ga Kill yet, but I was I, it was in my watch list, and I was about <clears> ready to start watching it. Oh, you're going to have to. I'm going to force you on that. I'm going <laughs> to force that. Oh, so a Kamen Ga Kill. One, also, one of my first anime. I'm going to, like, my t like the first ten, I'm going to say around my first. <laughs> so, a Kamen Ga Kill. Ooh, this is a real tearjerker, like, emo very emotional. So, exactly. the genre is psychological and drama mm. with a lot of action. Mm-hmm. So, Tatsumi is the main character. He is a, uh, you know, your basic warrior. This is a whole fantasy thing, of course. He's a warrior. Uh, he has two friends. They set off in the capital to earn money for their uh, poverty-stricken village. Mm -hmm. Along the way, they find a, a noblewoman, mm -hmm. like a young noblewoman, mm -hmm. that takes them into her carriage. Mm -hmm. Uh, but actually, wait, sorry. Before that point, uh, Tatsumi gets separated from his friends. He can't find him. The noblewoman takes him into her carriage because she feels bad. Ah. Uh. So, as he's, you know, in the mansion with her and whatnot, he's sleeping. He wakes up. Like, he knows, like, something's wrong. I'm scared. So, he goes out, sneaks around the castle. He goes to a building behind it. And he finds his friends strung up, uh, tortured, and killed. So the noblewoman is kidnapping people just to torture and kill them. But an assassin group called Night Raid attacks and saves him because they see something in him. It's like, all right, he has so much anger towards the noble people of this world. We can use that and he can help mm. fight them because they're so corrupt and evil. Sounds like something I would watch, actually. It's people die. Yeah. A lot of people die. People you really like and enjoy. It's. I don't want to get too into it because I don't want that many spoilers. Exactly. That, that, that's but, the thing with this. Is like, it's so difficult to talk about animes that we love without spoiling Without it. spoiling it's it. It's for, so difficult. For each other and you watching. Exactly. It's so difficult. All right. So we have to keep beating around that bush without actually flattening the bush. You got you know? you to gotta like, you like sneak your head in there with like, okay, this is what it's all sneak about. Sneak peek, but not enough to ruin it. You can't just like go full fledged yeah. in there just quite yet. Exactly. All right. So, for this one, I was actually recommended uh, this by Brody, because this is one of his absolute favorite animes, and I've seen Brody it. Brody is his friend. Exactly. One of my other weeaboo friends that uh, I'm actually going, that's actually the one <clears throat> accompanying me to my trip to Japan next uh, June, this June, whatever you want to say. Um, but it's uh, entitled Made in Abyss. Absolute, one of his I know favorites. nothing about this one, so okay. this is all you right all here. All right. So this is the only one, this is like my first one that I've actually had to like write notes on, because uh, Goblin Slayer didn't really have to write notes on it because everybody knows what Goblin Slayer is and me and Braxton already know it, so yeah. I, we really didn't have to tell each other about it. Citrus, since it was the worst anime I've ever seen, I didn't really want to talk about it notes-wise. I just wanted to, like, spit out what was in my head. Spit it out there, upset exactly. that of how bad it is. Exactly. So, for Made in Abyss, it was made by, uh, Kinema Citrus. <laughs> just saying the word citrus, uh -huh. just saying the word citrus gives me PTSD of that anime. But, um, exactly. the, story, the story is, is that there's this abyss. Uh, in this world, and it's kind of like my, it's kind of like Terraria, or Minecraft. The, the Terraria deep, is like a two D Minecraft yeah. with a lot more things yeah. to it. Deeper, For you OG gamers. The deeper you go, the better the like finds you would get. Like okay, the, so, um, so it's kind of like a dungeon almost. It's kind of like a dungeon. It's multi multi dimensional dungeon as I'll call oh. it. Uh, it says that the the abyss is the last explored place of the world. So it's. Oh. So it's like, there's layers. There's like the first few layers, 
which they're I forgot what kind of like levels of a dungeon yeah, almost because yeah. I'm guessing there's creatures in the abyss. Yes, yes. Okay. And then at the very bottom is the so-called abyss because I can't remember what it's called. Like the I think it's called the abyss, but the final layer is also called the abyss. I could be wrong, but the place is filled with amazing things, like things that would easily like make anybody rich. And it's surrounded okay. by like this little crater. I'll pull. Uh, it's kind of like a volcano. Mm -hmm. It's like like it's like the shape of a volcano. It's like the the hills. And then the like abyss. This. It's like the abyss is down there. Okay. There's a city that lives right on the rim, so it's like oh. it's downhill. So okay. it's the city. The city resembles basically what you would find in Brazil. It's like super crowded with houses right. and stuff like that. Super crowded, crowded and kind of poverty kind of thing. Not really right? poverty. No. Just just very very cramped. Yes, and like okay. dirty. And then there's like these things called cave raiders, which actually go down into the depths and find stuff, bring it back up, sell it, that sort of stuff. Not really sell it. Make their money that way, kind yeah, of. Yeah, technically. Um, so this the main girl is named Adiko, who lives on the rim of the, uh, the abyss and stuff like that. She wants to grow up and be like her mom, which was one of those cave raiders. Ah, I see. And the first episode, we're introduced to this robotic boy that she finds in, that she finds in one of her adventures. And it turns out that this... Boy doesn't know that he's necessarily a robot. He just knows that he has like a few super abilities and ends up calling hmm. her Wreck because she does like the the robotic board. Like, boy doesn't have like a name itself. Um, so what ends up happening is they spend like the first like two, three, I think four episodes talking about the dangers of how far the abyss goes. The, okay. the deeper you go, the like harder it is to breathe. The hotter it is. The more unsettling it is. Like, many people who try to go down that deep, like, severely unprepared, mm -hmm. end up getting killed by the monsters or end up dying from, like, heat, food, that sort of stuff. So, you know, but this girl doesn't care. She, uh, Nico doesn't care. She ends up taking Reg, Reg with her, just those two. She has her friends, like, support her and stuff like that. But those two just end up going down into the abyss with, like, very little, like, kind of like they prepare, but at the same time they... Don't prepare. Like rushed? Kinda? It's kind of, yeah, kind of. And, like, I'm only, I'm only on, like, episode 7, unfortunately, so I can't really tell you what, like, happened. Like, I can tell you what happens up to the point. Like, like they actually, like, go down there, and um, it, there's just... I love the series, don't get me wrong, and it's just... I ha I need to be able to watch it more often because it's been, like, several weeks since I've seen the last episode. Mm -hmm. So, um, I could be wrong on some of the stuff that I say, but... Uh, pretty much what I was, what, what I could gather from watching like the first like half of the series was it's actually pretty amazing for it like for it being technically a slice of life but it's not that much like that big of a slice of life. Mm -hmm. um, it's real like there's comedy in it as well. That's why comedy is okay. a, a subgenre because you know while there is a lot of adventure and fantasy and stuff like that, they sprinkle in like comedy every once in a while just so. That's how a lot of them are adventure yeah. fantasy with a little bit of comedy. Exactly. Just to liven and, things and up. And I absolutely enjoyed watching Main and Abyss, uh, especially uh, since Brody's one of like the biggest fans of Main and Abyss. I thought I was going to go into it like expecting it to be like, you know, probably the same as um, uh, Tony Bochy. Like, a absolutely good anime and wholesome but it's not as wholesome as i thought it would but it's still a good anime to check out and watch and i'll talk about it already about you on my next one but for now braxton's got two more to talk about yes i do so we are on blue exorcist mm -hmm. i feel like everybody's probably at least heard of it i've heard of it haven't seen it sadly so i have it set as an action adventure fantasy and psychological because it kind of kind of moves your heart around, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you really feel the main character. And... There's also comedy. Comedy, too. So, ah. But it's not... I mean, I think comedy's more prominent, but the psychological is more important as a yeah. subgenre. All right. So the story revolves around Rin and his brother Yukio, his twin brother. They were raised by their father, Shiro, who is an exorcist who hunts, like, demons and spirits and whatnot mm -hmm. to protect them from normal people. Uh-huh. So, w witnessing his father dying to protect him, he finds out that their father is Satan, and they were adopted. So what he does is he takes the demon-slaying sword, Kur Kur oh god, Q -E you, you're going to have to say this. All right, where is it at? Sorry, uh, it's, it is right over there somewhere. 
right there. Kurikia. That. <laughs> I'm not too familiar on how to say that. Which, restrain, which restrains his demonic powers. From that moment on, Rin not only gains demonic features like fangs and a tail, but also the power to ignite blue flames that can destroy almost anything. Huh. So what happens is the organization that is full of exorcists and trains them, mm. takes him in, because even though he's a risk factor, he can benefit them greatly if they can control him. So it's kind of like it's normal school setting, but they go out on missions and uh, like hunt demons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, at, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go further into it. I don't want to spoil anything, but it gets real. You, you really feel the main character and it, it, it gets pretty uh, dark. Pretty dark, yeah. yeah. All right, then you got another one to go with. Black down. Clover, which is like the fan, which is like the uh, like medieval fantasy version of Blue Exorcist. That's why I put them together. Black Clover features Asta, the main character, a young orphan, with his, uh, sorry, young orf orphan with his best friend Yukio, who is also orphan at the same time. <laughs> so, in this world, everybody is born with the ability to utilize mana to, like create spells and other things like that, reinforce their body. Yeah. So, Asta, he's not able to use any mana. Unlike everybody else. Mm -hmm. But he wants to become the Wizard King, so he trains every single day to push his f the limits of his physical body to the max, try and make up for that, and still has hope that one day he'll be able to use magic. Mm -hmm. Now, his best friend, Yukio, is the complete opposite. He's a prodigy. He's able to use magic almost instantly from birth and is incredibly powerful with it. Who also want, uh, Both of them want to become the Wizard King, which mm. is basically the uh, more like... De like protects the kingdom. Protects the king ah, and protects okay, the yeah, kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The king's technically above, but the Wizard King's way more powerful. So they create a friendly rivalry against each other about them both wanting to be the next Wizard King. Mm -hmm. Now they... Go to get their grimoires. Uh, every magical knight, well, every person for the most part has a grimoire, which allows them to utilize spells. Because without it, they it's hard for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So, Yukio gets the legendary four-leaf clover that the first wizard king had. Ooh. While Asta gets a old, dirty, worn-out book, but it's a five-leaf clover. Nobody has seen that before. Nobody know, knows what that means. So, with Asta's grimoire, he's able to uh, take out different type, types of swords, usually big, heavy, great swords, yeah. that have anti-magic properties, that can cut through magic. Hmm. As well, he, he has some anti-magic spells. Basically, he's able to destroy and dispel any magic, and then he takes them down with his physical prowess. Mm. So, and then they each go to join the magic knights. Uh-huh. Uh, Yukio, as the prodigy he is, he gets accepted by the most prestigious one, the... Ooh, what was this called? I have no idea. Oh, I can't remember. Because I, I haven't seen it either. Uh, so. The most prestigious uh, knight faction, because there's different factions uh -huh. with their leaders. Uh -huh. Well, Asa gets chosen by the Black Bulls, which is the lowest, the least popular, the ragtag team, the very rambunctious scoundrel type. Thing. Okay, okay, okay. And I think I'm going to wrap that up. <laughs> yeah. So, for people who are more like slice of life, kind of like what I am, uh, they would find that um, usually, usually like the fantasies and stuff like that, like the fantasy, like action ones that we've been listing off of, uh, like literally all the ones that we've talked about today, <laughs> but literally the only exception of the enemies that we've talked about that aren't like action, fantasy, uh, Citrus, fantasy. boy. Yeah, citrus. <laughs> That's it. But we're going to change that up just a little bit. I'm going to have... Because uh, Taylor's more of a slice of life guy. I am. I guy. Am. That's what he watches. Yeah. So, I'm more of a fantasy type guy. Exactly. Fantasy action. I do watch fantasies, but however, I'm more of a slice of life guy myself. So the first one in the slice of life category to like watch is this anime. Uh, and pardon my Japanese because it's horrible, but I'm going to try and pronounce it as best as I Better can. Better than mine. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's uh, called the uh, Tonibochi no Maru Maru Saikutsu, which is how, well, basically the shortened version is just called the Tonibochi, which in Japanese roughly translates to all alone or something like that. Oh, that's depressing. It is. The, the story itself is pretty depressing. Uh, it's basically centered around this girl named Tonibochi, 
who suffers from severe social anxiety. Who uh, is entering now entering middle school, uh, different different middle school than her elementary friend, like her only elementary friend, gotcha. who's named uh, Yadawada Kai. Or the yeah, names are quite Yawada Kai. Complicated. <laughs> it is. That's the hardest part about Japanese is naming the Jap the saying the Japanese names. But her friend uh, uh, Kai Yadawadi, or Yadu, sorry. Uh, you can and, just abbreviate it. Just... Yeah, I'll just I'll just call her Kai because in Japanese you always say your you always um, grab my say your last name for the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that left my mind for whatever <laughs> reason when I wanted to say it. But she makes like this bet, like this thing, like childish bet, like if you don't make friends with every single one of your classmates, I will not talk to you again. Which is a little devilish. Good God, I know. I have um, problems making it with one. I know. The, this one, the Hitori Bochi is super, like, relatable. A relatable slice gotcha. of life. Because we've all gone through that social anxiety going into, like, middle school or high school. especially. I usually just school. walk up telling a wildly inappropriate joke. And it's yeah. like, hey, you like that joke? All right, I'm hanging out with you. Exactly. She ends up making friends with uh, this girl called Nako, who uh, is mistaken as a delinquent, even though she's just a nice girl all in all. Best girl, by the way. Uh, nice girl. An another one uh, called uh, Honshu Aru, who is supposedly the perfect girl, but she's not really perfect at all. And then there's this other girl who comes from America uh, called Soika. They're, they're, they call her Soika, uh, who's basically infatuated with ninjas, basically. And she mistakes Bochi for a ninja and becomes her master, oh. basically. It's very, it's like, it's very, like, cringe, like... If you're watching it coming That from, part right there is cringy. It Ooh. is. But it's very wholesome. It's very like adorable watching Bochi go through um go through these uh stages where she's trying to make friends with literally everybody in her class and she's having a hard time because of course she has uh, what uh social anxiety. Social anxiety. Let me let me pull this I up. I have a bit of that. Yeah, everybody has been that. Even I have a bit of that as well. Uh let me look up because there's some interesting facts about this. Uh, the girl who plays Hattori Bochi, uh, Morishirai uh, Chisakai, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, that, that's her only role as a voice actress. Everybody who's ever played like anime like actress roles has played it like hundreds of others. Um, but, you know, uh, the voice actress for Hattori Bochi, who's like this made, super made character, it has only had one role, which is that character. So for her, for... Uh, for her voice actress to be the main character in her first ever anime, it's kind of rare to find in mm -hmm. that situation. And oh, I have to... oh, wait, hey Taylor, if I remember correctly, the actor that played uh, Kirito from Sao was the same that played Subaru from Re Zero. I, I, th I think so. I, I think believe so. Because so. I cause... so that's a love hate relationship with that guy. <laughs> I uh, the quintessential quintuplets. Uh, this was made by Sakuka Productions. I think I said that wrong as well. Uh, but the story is is this high schooler named Futuro Usugi who is very poor, uh, but he's like one of the best students in the class. He's like okay, top. So he tries. Does he try very hard? No, or is no, it no, more no, of no. a natural talent? It's a natural talent. Oh, that's depressing. But he ends up running into this girl named Itsuki Na Nanako or Nakano, excuse me, and ends up like like making her mad. And her sister in the first episode ends up calling him. It's like. Hey, I know what we could do to get this debt of ours out of the way. And it's this very rich guy who's offering a tutoring session or whatever. Not tutoring session, just offering somebody to be their tutor for Sorry. their daughter. Okay, or their daughters, as you'll find out here in a moment. <laughs> um, they're all terrible at school. Like, the, 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 the daughters are all terrible that's at school. That's harsh. That, that, that's, why, that's why they're all being... They're that's all, all dumb. That's all they're wa Blech, it's me. That's why they're all trying to get uh, tutored and stuff like that. And the so they can become big brain. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the re and Futuro accepts this offer, goes to the uh, hotel or whatever that they're living in, and runs into Itsugi once more. And it's like, why are you here? It's like, oh, this is my apartment. Fi turns out, not only does Futuro have to tutor uh, Itsugi, who he ran into and made her mad and stuff like that. He also has to tutor her four other sisters. Uh, they're all named Miku, Ichika, Nina, Yots and Yotsuba. I can't make a four out of that. So no, you're just doing a finger gun. <laughs> but uh, they are all they they are all terrible 
at uh, at school. They're basically flunkers, basically past flunkers. So Futaro has to tutor all five of these uh, girls in one big group. Basic harem anime, am I right, guys? But the the issue with that is all the girls are just big troublemakers. They are just, they try everything to not stop discipline them. Yeah. Link. I mean, I mean, literally, <laughs> literally in the first episode, who was it? Was it? Uh, it was Nino that actually drugged Futaro to sleep, took him out of the house. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole thing is Bill um, Cosby in training, <laughs> basically. Uh, <laughs> the whole thing you you'll be introduced to this like immediately as you start the series, so it's not really much of a spoiler, but <clears throat> it technically is. But uh, as long as it's not too big, Futaro is going to end up marrying one of those five. We don't know who. Like, not even in the manga do we know who. Just take is. the whole group. Just take the whole group. <laughs> it's all good. It's like you're going apple picking. I'll just take a basket. Exactly. But, um, <laughs> try to see if I can find Hanukkah's album real quick. Because she plays, I think she plays, uh, Ichika in, um, what is that? Surprised they're not all the same voice actor if they're uh, quintuplets. Well, they look about the same. they're all they're all like they all have different like styles and stuff like that. Miku is like the, the like the longer depressing emo one. Yeah, technically yes, you're not wrong when you think <laughs> of that. Like I'll show you, I'll show you. Uh, this is what. Let me see. Is there a mysterious cool guy in the anime? Because there usually is. There's there. That's Miku right there. Show that to the camera. Uh, I'll pop it oh, up on the screen. Oh, sorry, I okay. pop that up on the screen. All right. Okay, there's Miku. Uh, here is Itsugi, the one that he rated to first. Oh. The very, the very cute one, Dakota's freaking sexy. Me shot up Dakota. Dakota's such a reject. Yeah. There's <laughs> Nino. Nino. Everybody loves Nino if you read the manga, which I could under, I could, I could see. And then here's, uh, there's Yotsuba. All have different colored hair. I've they all, they all do. That's different all, shades that's of the whole red. Point. And then here's, uh, Ichika. Who's is, that, is that the guy? Wait a minute. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll show you the guy real quick. There, there's, there's the guy right there. Ah. Yeah. I was, ex I was expecting more short, spiky hair, covers the eyes. No. Never shows his eyes, kind of thing. No. All right. And um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right. So that's basically that's basically the entirety of um. That's basically the entire. All right, I think we went on a little long with that one. Yeah, but we got a couple more left on this episode. <clears throat> yes, we have three more, including this one right here. <clears throat> Sorry. Tokyo Ghoul. Mm. I'm pretty sure everybody's heard of this. Exactly. The new season came out. I haven't watched it yet because I heard it like, strays very far off the course of the original because it's like re-Tokyo Tokyo Ghoul. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it has way different plot. Tokyo Ghoul. Follows Ken Kaneki, the college student who barely survives a deadly encounter with his date, who reveals herself as a ghoul. He just uh, he is taken to the hospital hospital in critical condition. After recovering, Kaneki finds himself he is turned into a half ghoul mm. because in the surgery they use part of his date's uh, organs to replace his I've own. Asked. Like, I've heard of this series, and I know the whole premise of it, and I just haven't watched it, so... Yes. So, ghouls mm -hmm. have, like, superhuman abilities, mm -hmm. but they have to eat human flesh to survive. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a huge problem. Now, ghouls are, like, known to the public, but they're more kind of a myth, because the government tries to cover it up, but it tries to hunt them, obviously. Yeah. So, the whole premise of that is him coping with realizing he has to eat people to survive and trying to protect that from his friends, protect them from knowing and protect them for people that want to attack Kaneki because he's a half ghoul. Mm -hmm. He's not really fit in in both societies. And it's a, it's very emotional. Like I cried at the end. It's whew. all right. So you done with that one? That yes, I are. am. So, um, so, Braxton has one more after mine, and then I still have one more after mine that I'm uh, just getting for, done talking about. Forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, so everybody knows uh, about uh, Koito Animation and how like spectacular their like animations uh, are. They amazing animations. And, like absolutely, Silent Voice is Stunning absolutely one animations. of them. One of the other ones, one of my favorite Koito Animation uh, series that I've ever seen in my entire life. Everybody knows it if you've ever heard of Koito Animations, the Miss Kobayashi Dragon Dates. 
Absolutely. So everybody has seen like the little dragon lolly, you know, with the, the, uh, the kana. like the that's kana. yeah, kana. the white hair, the horns, yes. you know, yep. pink sweatshirt. Oh, I didn't, I didn't Everybody's see, seen that. I didn't see it in Japanese. So that's what it's from. I'm sorry, I didn't see it in Japanese. Let me let me butcher it real quick. Ah. Kobayashi san shi no made dragon. I'm ter- Better than what I can I, say. I mean, I kind of say it. I I can kind of say it okay. It's just sometimes it gets mixed up with like how you say it. So I'm not terrible, but I'm not good either. So I mean, for anybody who hasn't seen. The Dragon Maids, or the Dragon Maid series. <clears throat> Basically, what happens is it's this um, salary worker, just like your basic um, salary woman, we'll call, uh, named Kobayashi. Uh, oh wait, if it's a woman, does that mean it's Yuri or no? Uh, a little bit. They they hint it. A hint lot. at it. All right. There's there's hints of Etsy, but they don't hints. actually do anything. Okay. No. So not domestic girlfriend level. Shut. <laughs> We'll talk about that in the third episode. Yes, we will. <laughs> anyway, so Wait for that. So what happens is uh, Kobayashi opens a door one day to a freaking dragon outside her door. Boom! Just there. Full on dragon, like staring dead or right in the eyes. It's like about ready to like kill her. Give it a smooch. <laughs> <laughs> More like give it a good old lunch from the dragon. Uh, mm. Turns into this uh, girl named uh, Toru. Everybody knows that uh, Toru is like that. Create like the crazy uh, dragon. Uh, she was, uh, she was in like this dragon world or whatever. Is that the one with the like blonde and like green the bl- hair? The blonde like, and the yeah. big freaking green the, tail. In the back. thick. I don't, not 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 thick thick, but you know. Like the, no 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 I, no. No, it, it's not it's not that. I I'm not saying like Michelin man level of thick. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, I have to look. I'm saying like you know hourglass. Figure, I'm more. Like. I'm more only looking at that tail. No. Nah. Oh, the <laughs> tail. But, Obviously, the most attractive you know, part. We're, we're introduced to uh, uh, Kana later on. Uh, she ends up being like this. Ele- uh, she goes to the elementary school uh, near Kobayashi's uh, house. They all have to go into an apartment and stuff like that. We just be like a bunch of different like dragons and stuff like that. There's a reason why it has an eight. Uh, eight as a score on the my anime list and it's 73rd popular because it's like really good the animation's really good everything about it's really good you can see the the characters stuff down there the, what i'm talking about mm. it's just ep- like, oh that's not who i was thinking of let me scroll through the characters yeah you were thinking of uh one. The, the one starts with q uh ooh. uh oh god i can't even say that <laughs> i don't know how you would pronounce this this uh name anyway i think it's like what's all called it I don't I, Hold on. Let me, let me like... It's a long and complicated name. Yeah, but I can't even read Kanakana just quite yet, so I can't really be too sure. It's voiced by Minimi, Ta- Ka- 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 Minimi Takashi. 6 Ta- 9 Ta- Takashi? Whatever. Takashi? Whatever. Yeah. And so, <laughs> she... You know, we're introduced to a bunch of, like, different dragons and stuff like that, and, like, it's like a slice of life. Mm-hmm. And it's probably one of like the more wholesome slice of lives that it evolved like the fantasy. It's yeah. a mix. It's a mix between the real world and the fantasy world. Okay. It kind of like mix. a reverse. I can kind of want to call it a reverse fantasy. Reverse fantasy. Because it's fantasy world characters that come to the real world more than likely. It's mostly that's the direct- complete opposite of most fantasies. So it well, is isekai, the genre, you know. Yeah, isekai is when you go from isekai. A- sorry, I keep saying isekai. I want. I don't know if I want to call it a reverse fantasy or a reverse isekai because they transport worlds. I think that'd be kind of a reverse isekai. I, I was gonna say because they're, it's not like they were transported forcefully. They just come, just okay, just kind of come and go. Yeah, they they could go back if they wanted to. It's just they would rather be in the real world and stuff like that. So. I don't know. I really recommend watching it as one of like uh, the first uh, things to watch from Koizo Animation. If not, Silent Voice, of course. I'll talk about that in the <laughs> third episode. But yep. Uh, so Braxton has his last one for these for this episode. All right. I, I feel like everybody's heard of this. I, I think everybody. Every has. every yeah. Everybody's heard of this. Death Note. Yeah. Everybody's heard of this. Everybody. I don't know if anybody like not everybody has seen it, but everybody's no. at least heard the name. Even if you don't an, know anime, you probably at least heard of Death Note. It's think, one of those popular. I think even like, people who don't watch anime know what Death yes. Note is. It's that popular. whether or not they watch it, they definitely know what it is. Yeah. It's, it's not as popular as Full Metal Alchemist. If you see, but it. it's up the. It, it is. It's if you ask me, it's on par with Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, Alchemist in like. It's how it's a classic, honestly. Uh-huh. If you're gonna watch anime, you gotta watch that at some point. Have you watched it? No. I'm gonna have to make you. <laughs> Hands down, one of my favorites. Oh man. 
hands down, making you. <clears throat> All right, so Death Node. Let me, here it is. The story follows Light Yagami. Mm -hmm. The main character's name is Light. I find that pretty cool. A teen genius who stumbles across a mysteri mysterious otherworldly book known as The Death Note, which belonged to, Shin belongs to the Shinigami, which is like a god of death, Ryuk. Mm. And it grants the user supernatural powers to control who is alive and who is not, basically. Whatever name you write down in the Death Note, they'll die within 24 hours. You can also write the cause of death next to it. If left blank, it's just a heart attack. Mm. So basically, uh, what happens is he starts killing off all the bad people in the world. You know, starts, you know, justice is his initial goal. Mm -hmm. But you notice, as the character progresses, his mindset starts changing slowly. It starts to go from anybody that's bad to anybody that opposes him. Mm. Like, the mindset changes so much from the first episode to the last. Mm. So what happens is the police are trying to track him down because even though he's killing off bad guys, he's killing off the ones in prison and all that too. The ones that are already behind bars, all that. Anybody. So what happens is they send in an expert because they can't catch him because he's a teen genius. He's a genius. He's, you know, outmaneuvering the police and all that. Uh -huh. for, for, uh, bring an expert called L, which he's also kind of a teen genius. He's, you know, he's a bit of a freak, introvert. Right. Um... So he's the like main detective, the lead on the case. Basically, the whole show was about the rivalry between the two, and uh, L always trying to catch him, but Light always trying to be one step ahead, mm -hmm. while trying to kill L at the same time because he's opposing him. Mm -hmm. But it also they also kind of develop a friendship at the same time. Oh, I'm not going to go too in the depth on how that happens or why, but. You start to love both of the characters, and it's it's honestly incredibly hard to tell who you're like rooting to win, honestly, because you like just get in love with both of the characters. Mm. See, the thing is, is with Death Note is I've never actually watched the anime, but I've known like several like pop culture references to it. Like there's Death there's Note a is... Netflix adaptation, which is god awful to watch. <laughs> that trust me. So I watched the original, and the Netflix one really pissed me off because it was just bad. I. I know for like a fact that I've seen a Death Note parody by like Smosh back in like their heydays. I don't oh, know. God. I don't know if that came, I don't know if that came before the anime release or not. I have to look that video up. Chicken and the egg kind of thing here. Yeah, <laughs> but like, uh, I remember like the the whole premise of Death Note. I've heard of it. Like everybody's heard of a Death Note. Like a notebook that you write down the name of a person, they die, or I think like the literal opposite is. There's a bunch of folklore behind stuff like that. Yeah, and like whether or not the complete opposite a book or the complete opposite is you would get a book, write the name down of a person who's dead, they would read, re come back, like come back. Yes. So I was going to put uh, Kaguya Sama Love is War as my last one. However, I think to stick with the whole psychological. Uh, drama. I think I'm going to throw. I think I'm going to trade it. Actually, okay. do a little trade. With we'll one do the, Love Is War next episode. Not next episode because it's not these. Ah, true. But, Isekai episode is next. Yeah. We'll do that one the third episode. Yeah, I was going to put it with the second most popular anime on my anime list, which is Steins Gate. Steins Gate. Now I have I. I believe I watched part of it, but I'm not too familiar it's with it. It's been a kind of difficult for me. It was difficult to get into it at first. However, that's what got me. It was hard to with with White Fox. It. I was I was gonna watch it anyway because White Fox same people that made Goblin Slayer, right? Yeah, let me actually clarify that. Yes. Yes. So two good ones. Yes. This was released back in 2011, and I actually have the visual novel because of the fact that I enjoyed the series so much. The thing is. Is with, uh, like between like normal anime, which is one season, twelve episodes long. Yeah. Steins Gate not only has two seasons and a movie, both of those seasons are twenty four episodes long, like the usual time length, which is like twenty six. So that's like a double arc each season. It's not because an arc is usually twelve episodes. That's kind of how. It yeah. Works. It kind of, yeah that is except this one. It kind of, like, since it's a visual novel, it kind of switches arcs, but it's not, like, very, like... Gotcha, rich. so not a huge switch, They, but... they kind of, like, stick in one, like, main story. Yeah. The main story 
is it's this science detective group. Not really a detective group, just a science group, like just a parody. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, but it's ran by this guy named Hoin Kyuma, who or uh, Okabe Renato, as they like to call him. I'm just going to call him Okabe because everybody knows if you talk about Okabe, you're talking about Steins Gate. And he's joined by, at first, just two other uh, um, sidekicks. Daru, who is this hacking nerd. Like one that always gotta get one of those. The, you always gotta have the smart guy. You know, push up the glasses. Push glasses, up the glasses glow. smash the keyboard. Yeah. He's the one that does all the effect. Hacking. Glasses glow. Boom. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, and then there's another one who's called uh, Mayashi, uh, who's my ringtone on my phone if I ever get a text message. Ooh. Uh, who is Okabe's childhood friend? Just just love and trust childhood friend because no, no. that's usually how it works. No, there's no <laughs> there's no she no. It's just a childhood friend, mainly okay. because she is a little retarded. So, <laughs> wow. Sorry, right. sorry. Had to be a little PC. All right, have the smart one and the dumb one as now, a side. Fun fact. Right. Fun fact. When I like, I went on my anime list. I made it an account because I'm that freaking weeb, and I actually like rated all the animes I've seen. Steins Gate's the only series that I put a ten on Damn. because I wow. absolutely love this series. Um, because. The first 12 episodes, this is kind of spo not really spoiling, it's just... When as long you, as it's not big spoilers, right. I think that reveals When you a watch lot the first 12 point. episodes, it's kind of like, it's slow, it's, you're, you're trying to like, it's building up. Gotcha, so but it's like rising it's action You the don't whole know time. it's building up, you literally don't know it's building okay, up. Okay, so there's like hints that it's building up, but yes, exactly. you don't kind of realize like, it at first. It just kind of hits you, I'm guessing? Yes, what ends up happening is, um, they wanted to build a Wait, machine. Spoiler alert, right? It, Kind of, yeah, yeah. All right, spoiler alert. Yeah. I'll just flash a potential spoiler alert in case if you're actually interested in watching this. But then, And then put a timestamp on we're done with it. Yeah, hopefully, if I remember exactly what the timestamp is. So what ends up happening is they, what, they wanted to make a time machine somewhat. They wanted to be the first group to ever make a time machine. What ends up happening is uh, they go to a little convention, uh, a science convention. Well, Okabe does, and Mayashi go to a little convention. And... While the convention is going on, a, like a mysterious thing smashes into the building, like at the roof of the building, causing a huge commotion, which turns out to be a time machine from the future, but they, you won't know that until like later on in the series. Um, gotcha. So I'm guessing it's kind of like a time loop, per se. Yes, exactly. Let me, let me go on. They go through, build it, come back, more, smash it, which sets that off. And... Yes. The more Okabe investigates the whole situation. He ends up opening a door and sees a dead girl, just dead, stabbed to oh, death, right in the damn. room. Blood, like blood, is flowing everywhere. Has a PDS, like like not a PDS. He just has like a freaking mental breakdown because he oh, just yeah. sees a freaking dead girl. Yeah. Closes the door, runs out, ends up grabbing the phone, ends up texting Dadu that somebody was stabbed. As soon as he clicks send, something weird happens. Like everything is just like gone crazy. Everything's like time travel, like. Everything's like, everything's white, everything's gone, like, see a bunch of numbers flying around. Gotcha. Next, next thing you know, boom, he's back on the ground, and Maishi comes up, he's like, what's going on? It's like, I don't know what's going on. He looks up at the building, the time machine's gone. The destruction, gone. It's like, what ha What about the, the conference? It's like, oh, it was canceled. It's like, no, it wasn't. We were literally there. Turns out what happened was Dadu made a microwave machine. I can't, the phone microwave, that's literally what's called, the phone microwave, that whenever it's hooked up with the phone attached to it or some, no, no, if it's ever with anything inside of it, while it's running, if somebody sends a text to a specific phone that's plugged in, in a specific time period, they travel back about 48 hours. So what ends up happening is um, Okabe accidentally goes back in time. But he doesn't realize he went back in time because he doesn't know what happened. Nobody knows what happened. But there's this thing where when you time travel, the only person that's ever had memories of what happened in the time travel is Okabe. So while everything is going on, like in the series, all this crazy stuff is happening. He's the only one that remembers it all. Everything. Every single death, every single footstep he's taken, taken. He's remembering it all. And every time, every time, no matter what he does, it always ends up in the same, like, end point. It's kind of like 
There's so like Groundhog Day kind of keeps repeating. Yes. Like what happens is which will trans well which will uh, transition us into ReZero next episode. Yes. What happens is they talk about um, this little thing where it's like a bunch of timelines and stuff like that, millions of particles of timelines. Every person that dies in one timeline, no matter no matter how lives far, in another timeline. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like once one. Time, which one when one end of the like let's say this is some person's life hits this point which is the the death part mm -hmm. they can't they, there's no way they can they, there's no way they can go through that mm -hmm. at all no matter what happens that there will always be a death at that specific time and a little this is a bigger spoiler i guess spoiler uh, alert big spoiler big alert, spoiler flash alert, alert, nights. <laughs> um what happens is okabe and Mayashi are like Okabe is trying to save Mayashi oh. for like oh. several episodes oh. because Mayashi ends up getting killed several times. What happens is, at first it was a gunshot. Okay, second time he's like, okay, get her away from the house where she shot at, and then we'll see what goes from there. They go to a train station to try and run away. Some kid pushes her right into the train tracks. <laughs> train. Rant, you can hold on to her, it's like push the kid first. <laughs> Pretty much, just runs her right over. Ugh. It's and then they try and you know I can't remember if there was like another one or two, but it's just sad. It's sad. It's just like the hopeless struggle. It is. It's literally a hopeless struggle of trying to save someone, but you can't. And the whole and I I really don't want to spoil the ending, but it's like, it's like. Don't okay, spoil the ending. I won't. If you think you're gonna, just cut yourself off. Exactly. Okabe wants to have. Everybody that he's met alive. As most people would. Yeah, exactly. Except the issue is is with the timelines. Somebody has to die. Somebody has to die. There's not there's one timeline where all of them survive, but it's like a zero point zero 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 one percent chance of So he, being he that keeps timeline. trying. Uh -huh. And trying. And and, trying. and the whole series is just a flipping roller coaster. Like literally a roller coaster of emotions. You're like and especially, okay, first 12 episodes, it's slow. It's like this part of the roller coaster where it's like this, and you're just like riding it. It's just like a nice, slow, uphill, like, climb. It's like, you know the story, you know the characters, you know what's happening. Now that you've known everything, you get to episode 12, end of episode 12, episode 12 and onwards. It's just, it's just a freaking roller coaster. You're going in every direction, endlessly possible in this of motion it's like oh my god what is happening i don't know how to feel about this and to say that i was i wasn't crying is a lie because at the end it was not more or less like sadness it's just shock i was just like what is happening and the fact that there's 24 episodes in the first season and then 24 episodes of the other season so 48 that's a lot of episodes it is and, and it's, it's good the whole time it is like okay there's one called Steins Gate, one called Steins Gate Zero. Zero, which is the shirt I'm wearing, is the second season. There's, for like the 23rd episode, they have like two versions of it. One of them, it leads to the end of season, it's like this. You, 23rd episode A or whatever leads to the end of Steins Gate. While 23B is a different ending. Different which, timeline. That yes. leads to the second it's, season. It's kind of like in a visual novel where if you pick one option, this happens. If you pick the other option, this uh, happens. Choose your own adventure. Exactly. Kind of thing. That's what Science Gate Zero is. And the end of Science Gate Zero, it's kind of like this. The end of, like, the, the episode that brings you into Science Gate. You can put some visuals up to yeah. help. The episode that brings you to the end of Science Gate 23A or what, or 23B that leads you into Science Gate Zero also leads into the end of Science Gate. So you have to go from Science Gate. Steins Gate 23B up to Steins Gate, uh, like the end of Steins Gate, and then the last episode of Steins Gate. You can watch uh, A as well, but if you after you watch A, you have to watch B, and then you got to go to through Steins Gate. It's a little complicated, but when you figure it out, all the process, my God, is it one of the best series to watch? And that's why it's number two <coughs> most popular on my enemy list. All right, I think that'll wrap it up. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Next episode, we're going to start it off with the Isekai. Exactly. And we'll start off with ReZero because it somewhat ties in to Steins Gate. Exactly. I kind of wanted to like do ReZero after like like Isekai Quartet, but we could talk about Isekai Quartet after 
after um, we get done with. We Michael. should start three zero though, because it exactly. fits it's, into it's Stein's, Stein's Gate, Gate with course. its whole timeline. And exactly. Going back. Exactly. Just tell about absolutely that. Absolutely incredible. All right. So thank you all so much for watching the Otaku Podcast. We'll see you next time on the Otaku Podcast. Good night. Bye.